In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this really awesome digital pan and cloning effect right inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get right into it. Hey, what's up? It's Chris from Rocker Films. And yes, in today's video, we're talking all about this really awesome digital pan and cloning effect. Now, before we can jump into the edit, we need to go ahead and we need to capture some footage. So you want to find a location with next to no background movement. If there's background movement, it's going to be really difficult to stitch this together. So try and shoot against a plain background or in a quiet area. You really want to avoid movement in the background. So make sure you're not filming with a busy road in the background or on a public high street. Make sure there is a very minimal amount of movement in the background. So once you've found the perfect location, mount your camera to your tripod dial all your settings into manual mode. Then you just want to frame up one part of the location, stop rolling, run out into the shot and complete the action. Now you want to run back to the camera, cut and you just want to pan the camera to the left or to the right. And when you're panning, you want to make sure the edge of the first shot is in the edge of the second shot. So there should be a slight overlap. It's super important that there is an overlap because we need to mask these two clips together in order for them to blend together. Now. Once you've got that shot, you want to keep repeating this process over and over again until you've got all of the clips that you need. And then once you've got all of those clips, in my example, I captured six video clips. So once you've got all your video clips, you want to get these onto the computer and you want to drop them into Adobe After Effects, create a brand new composition, and we can begin with this effect. So jumping into Adobe After Effects, you can see we've got six video clips that I shot. So here's one clip. Here is the second clip. Here is the third clip. Here is the fourth clip. Here is the fifth clip. And last but not least, this is the sixth clip. So we're just going to drop all of those onto our composition. And we're going to make sure the first clip is at the very beginning and the last clip is at the very bottom. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. Now you want to go ahead and you want to make a brand new null object. So we're going to go layer, new, null object, you want to drag that to the very top and then you want to select all of your videos, use this pit whip tool and we'll drag that onto the null object. This means when we change the values of the null object, every single video clip on the timeline will be affected. So you want to go ahead and you want to create a brand new keyframe on the null object for position. So we'll press P and that should load at position. Select the stopwatch icon at the very beginning to create a brand new keyframe. Now we'll go over, let's say eight seconds and we'll change the value of the position all the way over to the left or to the right. Whether you go left or right will depend on which way you panned. So because I panned to the left for each individual shot, I want to move the null object to the right. So this means if you pan your camera to the right, then you want to move the position of your null object over to the left. Now I'm just gonna pull the position all the way over just to the edge of the frame. And we're gonna get video clip two, and we're gonna drag this over. Now, as you can see, this white board is in both of those video clips, and that is because I made sure there was an overlay. So we're gonna grab video one and press T on the keyboard. Now we're gonna pull the opacity down to 50%. We're gonna grab video two, that is merge two, and we're gonna press P on the keyboard to load position. We'll pull the position over and we want to roughly line these two clips up. Now, you might have to go ahead and adjust the rotation in order for these to match up. As you can see, these are slightly out. So I'm going to press R on the keyboard to load rotation. We'll add some rotation to the shots. We'll press P on the keyboard again to load at position. And we'll just make sure these are perfectly lined up with one another. Right, so now that these are roughly lined up, you just want to go ahead and you want to create a brand new mask on merge one, that is video layer one. So we'll press T on the keyboard to load at the opacity again, pull this up to 100%. Then we'll go to the square tool, that is the rectangle tool on the top bar, and we'll draw a mask around the whole video, but make sure you cut off the left side of the video. Now we'll go to mask one, mask feather and we'll increase the feather all the way up to around 70-80%. Now once you've done that you just want to go into the mask one and you just want to change the positioning of the mask if needs be to make sure there is no weird masking overlapping happening. 
So as you can see right here, there are two parts of the video that are overlapping and it looks a little bit ugly. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to clean that up. It doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as it looks decent enough, then you should be able to get away with it. Right, so that looks about right. Right, now we're going to go into the null object. We're going to load up the transform tab. So press that drop down arrow and we're going to decrease the scale of everything. Then we'll just bring the position keyframe back over. We're just going to update the position of this. Pull this down a touch. Pull this over to the right. And then we're going to go down to merge three. And we're going to position this over to the left. Now it's super important again that you match up this clip to video layer two. So as you can see, I've lined up this bottom part of the video. This bit is pretty much in the exact position where it needs to be. But as you can see, it's just gone a little bit wrong up here, but that's fine. We're going to use this bottom part to blend the video clips together. So go back into merge two, pull this opacity up to 100%. We're going to pull this video clip over to the left to make sure that I'm not in the left side of the video. We'll start by around there. And then we'll just, again, we'll load up the We'll load at the pen tool this time and we're just going to draw a mask around that video. So we'll go into the mask of merge two and we'll increase the mask feather. Again, this won't be perfect, but just try and get this as close as possible. Right. So as you can see, we've got three video clips already stuck together. So if I go into null one, load up the transform tab. We'll pull the position all the way back. So we've got a three second animation here. We can add some rotation. So we'll create brand new keyframe on rotation at the beginning. We'll go three seconds in to so the same time as the position and we'll add some rotation in there. Now there's a version of myself in each one of these three video clips and by stitching these three clips together we've got this really awesome panning cloning effect happening. It looks as if the camera is on the tripod, it's panning from right to left and as it's panning it's revealing a few different versions of myself. Of course though this is not perfect because we can see the black video at the top and the bottom and this is because we reduce the scale. So I'm going to go back into the null object we're going to increase the scale all the way up to around 106%. We'll go to the first keyframe. We'll update the position. So we'll pull this down a touch. We'll go to that last keyframe and we'll pull the position over to the left. And then you just want to go through the video and make sure at no point there is black video on the top or the bottom of the frame. Now, as you can see, there are definitely imperfections along the way. Because we've stitched these two shots together, we've got this weird merging effect happening over here. So if you wanted to avoid this, then you can just add a soft zoom in to avoid that part. So in order to do that, you just want to go onto scale. And before that appears in the frame, you just want to create a brand new keyframe on scale and position. Go roughly one second to the right, we'll increase the scale. And now if we just update the position of that last keyframe, you can see that we've perfectly avoided that weird merging effect from happening. So now of course you can just keep repeating this process over and over again for each individual clone that you have. So you just want to put these clips next to each other, make sure they line up perfectly next to each other, cut the left side or the right side of the frame off and increase the feather to blend these clips together. And then once you parent these with the null object, you should get a really awesome and really seamless camera movement. And there you go. Once you've completed that, then you have successfully completed the digital pan cloning effect right inside of Adobe After Effects. So if you enjoyed watching this video, then please do let me know in that comment section below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and check out the previous video. And I will see you tomorrow for another brand new video. See you there.